Good evening uh, and welcome to the this webinar for uh, Dental Foundation Training Recruitment to support entry to Dental Foundation Training in September 2022. My name is Peter Briggs. I'm the, uh, 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 the lead dean for Dental Foundation Training and welcome you to the to the webinar. Can I, uh, before I start, can I confirm that we will be doing questions and answers at the end of the session? And could I direct you to the uh, team's Q&A function in relationship to those questions? Next slide, please. So firstly, welcome. The presentation is relevant to dental foundation recruitment leading to entry to training in September 2022. It applies for those applying via the National uh, Recruitment Office for dental foundation posts within England, Northern Ireland and Wales. There is a separate process for applying for dent, uh, vocational training in Scotland and, Scot and, and Scotland students are welcome to apply for this process. We understand uh, that the last 15 months have been very challenging for you and that you will all have concerns about your future. Our hope is that this presentation will provide reassurance for you on the future uh, future dental foundation recruitment. Next slide, please. This evening I'm joined by Adina Roston, who is a current FD. She will provide the trainee perspective and advice for your uh, uh, dental Foundation application and also I'm joined by Miles De Santos from the uh, operations manager of the London DFT National Recruitment Office that oversees the recruitment process for England, Northern Ireland and Wales. As mentioned there'll be a short question and answer session after the presentation but clearly there will be lots of questions potentially and we know that you'll all be having local presentations by your local regional deans and hopefully some of those questions can be answered and taken up those as I think our time this evening will be limited. The webinar will be recorded this evening the link made available via YouTube it will be shared also with Copdend and the Dental Schools Council. As mentioned, this webinar will complement local postgraduate dean presentations to you uh, in relationship to your local schools. Next slide, please. Dental Foundation training is a 12 month period of employment and generally training takes place within the NHS general or personal dental services. There are a small number of two year schemes in England which combine Dental Foundation training and DCT1 competencies. Satisfactory completion of training i.e. at the end of the of, of the end of the training is the gateway to enter the NHS performer list in England, Wales and the health boards in Scotland and Northern Ireland as an independent practitioner. The recruitment process is a competitive process for an employment position, i.e. working as a foundation dentist in normally a, a dental foundation training practice. Next slide, please. You will be required to demonstrate satisfactory completion of foundation training in order to be awarded a certificate of satisfactory completion. You'll be expected to complete both a minimum of 12 months full time training and demonstrate satisfactory progress. Your progress of competence will be formally reviewed by a panel after five and between 10 and 11 months. You'll be required to have demonstrated a broad range of competencies as set out in the Dental Foundation training curriculum. And your training may need to be extended a year if the panel decides that this is necessary. Next slide, please. Please note delivery of competencies required uh, may be impacted by COVID pandemic. You will all realize that from, from the last 18, uh, 15 to 18 months. And the Dental Foundation training, the timeline to recruitment, therefore may be subject to change. Assessment of satisfactory completion is not an examination. In it is a it is an in absentia review of supporting evidence by a FRCP panel. You have the right to review and appeal an FRCP panel recommendation if you think that its decision is incorrect. The quality management of dental foundation training aligned to the dental foundation blue guide of 2016 together with its relevant supplements working across England, Northern Ireland and Wales. Next slide. This evening we will be covering the following areas uh, which I will be dealing with individually as we go through the presentation. Next slide please. 
So firstly, the number of posts and applicants for the current People in Dental Foundation training. I think the, the, the main message is approximately there are 900 posts, Dental Foundation places currently available in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Next post, next slide please. The aim of the recruitment process is to rank eligible applicants at assessment and interview. To allow allocation to 12 month dental foundation training or the longitudinal two month joint foundation core training schemes mentioned earlier across England, Northern Ireland and Wales. The dental foundation National Recruitment Office has been required by MDRS to adapt the way we adapt the way we select foundation dentists as a direct result of the COVID pandemic. Ranking for, for entry into training in 2022 will be based on a situation judgment test score and also a virtual interview, a communication interview station for 2022 dental foundation entry. So that will be different from the previous year. There will be no face to face interviews as part of this process. Next slide, please. Ranking scores will be weighted as follows. The SJT will account for 75% of the assessment scores and the virtual communication interview station 25% of the scores. Clearly popular schemes and practices are likely to be more competitive, i.e. more applicants per place. And the process will uh, complies with employment law requirements. Next slide, please. You won't need to, un you, you will be well informed as healthcare professionals of the reasons and rationale for implementing COVID measures. There will clearly be clear guidance for the virtual interview on communication, which will be communicated in the near future. The scenarios to be used for the comm station will be available on Oriel before the virtual interview. The D Dental Foundation Recruitment Working Group is currently working with the Dental Schools Council on development of the scenarios used in that virtual communication assessment. Dental Schools Council and the BDA are aware of the formal recruitment assessment uh, format of the recruitment assessment to support entry for training in 2022. Next slide, please. Supporting candidates with disability. Applicants are encouraged to declare any disability on the application form to ensure they are supported through the process. They will also be required to fill out the form and the following link and provide evidence. Full guidance will be given when the advert is published on Oriel. A disability cannot be considered retrospectively. The absolute da deadline for this is Thursday the 9th of September 2021, which as we go through the presentation realise is a very important date because it is a date on which the application process will close, after which no adjustments can be made. Allowances adjustments be made in accordance with Health Education England policies, which can be found in Oriel. Next slide, please. Supporting applicants with special circumstances. This applies to applicants with special circumstances have a requirement to train in a particular location. There are three criteria. Criteria one is applicant is the primary care for someone who is disabled as defined by the Equality Act 2010. Criteria two is an applicant has a medical condition or disability for which ongoing follow up for the condition is in the specific location uh, is an absolute requirement to be in that specific location. Criteria three is about uh, relates to parental responsibilities when applicant is a parent of a child under the age of 18. Next slide, please. Again, with special circumstances, it's applying at the point of application and submitting supporting evidence directly to the link below. All applications and special circumstances will be considered where appropriate evidence is provided. Acceptance will be subject to availability and cannot be guaranteed. Where approved, allocations will be to a scheme, not to an tr individual training practice, and the COVID pandemic may impact schemes declared. More details available in the handbook, application handbook and applica applicants for special circumstances consideration will be subsequently be contacted by the Dental Foundation Training Recruitment National Recruitment Group office. Next slide, please. Which training posts are included? 
basically all dental uh, training posts in England, Wales and Northern Ireland uh, to commence in September 2022 are included in this recruitment. Please note that the appointment and declaration of training practices and education supervisors for 2022-23 training by HE Aries and Celtic Deaneries will not be confirmed until 2022. Therefore, any location information uh, given on websites is for guidance only. It is not recommended that you contact or visit any practices before you have been offered a training place. And Scotland will as mentioned earlier, recruit separately to its schemes. Next slide. This is a diagram, diagramic representation of the areas and regions available uh, with this recruitment. In England, there's the Northwest, Midlands and East, Southwest, Thames Valley and Wessex, London, Kent, Surrey and Sussex, the Northeast, Yorkshire and Humber, and there is also Wales and Northern Ireland, all part of this recruitment. Next slide, please. The key dates for the recruitment process, the applications open on the thir Thursday, the 12th of August, 2021. The application window closes on Thursday, the 9th of September, 2021. The situation judgment test uh, as part of the assessment will take place between the 8th and 16th of November. We are un clear in terms of the exact dates of the virtual communication interviews at this stage. So we're giving a range between November and December 2021. As soon as we can firm up the dates for that, uh, we will let people know via Oriel. The preferencing initial offers and final offers, offers you'll see are not confirmed at this stage. And from our experience this year, we think it wise at this stage to keep to, to keep the situation that way. And of course, we will endeavour to, to firm up these dates and confirm them as soon as soon as we know and communicate accordingly. Next slide, please. How to apply for uh, entry to Dental Foundation training in 2022? Well, uh, advert application form, personal specification, application, applicant guide will be available on Oriel website from 12 noon on the 12th of August 21 until 9 a.m. the 9th of September 21. So that will be the only period that this process is open and available. All communication from Dental Foundation Recruitment Office will be sent via Oriel. Next slide, please. Common application questions in the form, bearing in mind um, year, year, year four or five dental students have not yet got their BDS degree in a GDC registered. Uh, the question one is if you are not registered with the GDC currently, please explain why you think you will be eligible to gain full UK GDC registration by the time of appointment. Answer if you're not registered with the GDC, please answer no to the question about the GDC registration, then explain when you expect to be registered in the free text that will appear below. Example, I'm currently a, a final year uh, dental student and will gain G GDS registration on completing my BDS degree. Second common question, will you be required to undertake Dental Foundation as the only route to uh, the NHS performers list in brackets in England and Wales only? I a graduate from a dental school in the UK. Answer should be yes if you're expecting to graduate from a UK dental school. Question date of qualification. Answer if you have yet to attain this, please confirm future approximate date in when you will be sitting your examination. Next slide, please. How will I be assessed in this process of recruitment? We've already mentioned there's going to be an SJT situation judgment test. That will be by a time situation judgment test held at a Pearson View Centre. Uh, format multiple choice answers and exam conditions, duration 105 minutes. Additional time can be accommodated in the SJT for applicants with certain health conditions, impairments, or learning disabilities. Depending on the recommendation, applicants may be approved 25%, 33%, or 55% additional time. An additional five minutes will be allowed to complete an evaluation uh, form. As mentioned earlier, the SJT is mandatory as part of this recruitment process and will comprise of 75% of the assessment score. 
the virtual communication interview, a single station, virtual interview focused on communication skills and will comprise, as mentioned earlier, of 25% of the overall assessment score. There'll be no face to face in, per in person interviews for the 2022 recruitment. Actors will not be used for the virtual uh, interview stations. The interview scenarios that will be used for the comm station will be available on Oriel before the assessment process. And as mentioned, this will count for 25% of the overall score. Next slide, please. So arrangements for sitting the SJT. The SJT will take place between Monday the 8th of November to Tuesday the 16th of November 2021 at Pearson View Test Centres, the centres where people do car, you know, car licensing and uh, tests, etc. There are approximately 180 centres across the UK. You'll be able to book your centre and time slot online. You'll be emailed to your notified account and sent a message via Oriel when booking becomes available. If you're having trouble finding a time slot available to Pearson View Test Centre cl uh, close to your dental school, you should contact the London and South East Application Support Portal who will liaise with Pearson View on your behalf. Please note bookings are made on a first come first served basis, so please book early to secure a convenient time slot. There are provisions for applicants who are shielding to sit the SJT at home. If this is relevant to you, you must apply through reasonable adjustment process. More information will be provided in the applica applicant book handbook, which will be assessed via Oriel. Next slide, please. Just briefly, what is an SJT or what are SJTs? Situation judgment tests are a measurement. I don't want to get too much into them because we have uh, Adina will be speaking about that shortly. They're a measurement method designed to assess judgment in a work relevant situation. Obviously, the work relevant situation for this recruitment is working in the dental practice as the foundation dentist. Um, and it and it will focus on presenting challenge situation like to be encountered in the workplace applicants making judgment about possible responses or actions and they'll be scored against predetermined key. The focus of the assessment uh, it, it, of professional attributes and behaviours such as integrity, empathy, resilience, team, team involvement and working and working under pressure. SJTs are not a test of your clinical knowledge or skills. Additional examples of SJT questions will be made available on the COPDEN website to coincide with the uh, commencement of the recruitment process in September. Next uh, slide, please. And we're not going to go into the details of this question, but clearly there's a, a, a ranking type question where you rank in order of actions as far as SJT. And we could have the next slide. And the other type of question is a multiple choice question where you choose where you're asked to choose a most immediate appropriate actions. Next slide. Preferencing of schemes. So details of schemes uh, will be published on Oriel. The preferencing is usually to schemes after offers have been accepted. Each HE area deanery will contact you regarding the process for local allocation to individual practices if appropriate for 2022-23. In 2021, as many of you know, the uh, National Recruitment Office uh, ha has used preferencing to practice level as a COVID mitigation. At this time point, preferencing is hoped to be reg uh, to, to, to regional schemes for the 2022 recruitment. It is likely that preferencing process will be delayed until spring 2022 and all applicants will be required to complete their preferences via Oriel. We cannot be absolute at this time point about when the preferencing opens and when the preferencing close. You advise to positively preference all areas in which you are willing to train and failure to do so may result in you preferencing yourself out of the recruitment and not getting a post. Next slide, please. All applicants will be collated and nationally ranked following the assessment and interviews. Offers to a scheme are usually made in June according to ranking and preference. It is important that applicants understand that there may be impact on this process from the COVID pandemic and applicants will be given 48 hours to accept or decline a post. Upgrading will be available for one week after initial offers. 
which means that should a higher rank preference become available for them, you may be offered this. Once the upgrade deadline has passed, no more upgrades will occur. Offer of a post will be according to ranking and preferencing and would be subject to the BDS or equivalent and full registration and eligibility for the NHS performance list entry by the date of commencement of the foundation training post. Next slide. Allocation to scheme at this stage, it is to scheme only, although NRO may need to consider sub preferencing to practices as a uh, COVID mitigation if thought necessary. Matching to individual practices usually occurs, as mentioned in the local HE offices and deaneries, later in the year once the tra trainer recruitment has been completed, if allocation to schemes is possible. Each HE office and deanery or the National Recruitment Office will publish information regarding local allocation to practices in 2022 once all of the trainers have been appointed where relevant. Provisional allocation to scheme will usually take place from June to July 2022, but as mentioned, is, 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 is subject to change of service configuration and pressures from COVID, etc. Next slide, please. UK dental school applicants will be given priority for a dental foundation place as they are not a, able to access the NHS performer uh, uh, li list with uh, another route. All applicants will be informed by the end of January 2022 if they are deemed appointable or not appointable for the DFT uh, in, in the coming year. If deemed appointable, please note this does not guarantee you a dental foundation training post. Next slide. Quality assurance of the process. Dental foundation recruitment is quality assured. Uh, the SJT process has been subject to a full uh, uh, quality impact assessment. The virtual interview will be include lay representation. The national QA panel will review the SJT and virtual comm interview scores and rankings before offers are made to ensure fairness consistency. The national QA, QA process will include a lay representative appointed by Health Education England. A review of the dental foundation recruitment process will be carried out at the end of the process and lessons learned identified and communicated to the MDRS dental subgroup, which includes external stakeholder representation. A national recruitment office will seek feedback from all applicants. Next slide. Oriel is the uh, system through which you will need to apply to dental foundation training. A very important point here, simply registering onto the system does not mean you've made an application. You need to press the submit button to apply for the process. You may think that it's very silly me saying that, but every year we have several dental students that fail to do that. So we must have the, uh, uh, the submit button must be pressed to formalize the application process into the, the NRO system. Please read the Dental Foundation Training applic Applicant Guide and Oral Applicant Guide in full. Give yourself enough time to apply before the closing date and time. As mentioned, late applications will not be accepted. Do provide all data requested in application form and declare any fitness to practice issues or disabilities where relevant by the required deadlines. Do positively rank all schemes and practice for which you're eligible to maximise your chances of success and do accept or reject an offer of a scheme practice as soon as you receive it. Next slide, please. Updates, due to some of the uncertainties, the Dental Foundation Training National Recruitment Office will send regular updates via email to ensure that applicants are aware of the timelines as decisions are made. Some email providers filter these into junk mailbox please check your junk mailbox regularly to avoid losing or, or not seeing these emails. Applications will receive emails via Oriel2 and notifications to the email address used to register that Oriel2 account. So please be vigilant around these emails coming in and being looked out and watched for very carefully. Next slide, please. 
So I'm not going to read through these dates. We've had it this five side before. It's a very important slide in terms of the reminder of the key dates and clearly the initial dates are very, very important for you. Uh, the application close date uh, at 9 a.m. on the 9th of September 2021 is a, is a date that you must take with you very clearly th 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 this evening. Also, the week of the SJTs, you need to be available for the, the, between the 8th and 16th of uh, November 2021. And we will inform you as soon as we can of the, the, the dates of the virtual comms interview station. Initial offers with offers we're planning on the 9th of June 2022, but as uh, but as the caveats from this year, uh, things can potentially flex and move uh, to support all parties. So we need to be realistic that that may happen. Next slide, please. So advice. Uh, uh, England, Northern Ireland and Wales do not run or endorse any paid interview preparation courses for this assessment inter interview. Example questions for the SJT are given with the D DFT applicant guide along with in-depth information on the whole of the recruitment processes. As mentioned, the comms, uh, uh, the comms interview scenarios will be made available on Oriel before the, the assessment interview. Please read the guide thoroughly before you submit your application. The application guide will be published in order when the advert opens on the 12th of August 21. If you have further questions once you've read the applicant guide, please refer them to the National Recruitment Office by submitting a query through their applicant support portal, the, the, the link of which has been used uh, in several slides this evening. Can I please ask that you do not send queries about the, Dent the Dental Foundation national recruitment uh, process to COPDEND? The COPDEN website will have uh, SJT example questions and the personal specification dental foundation training, but it is not uh, designed to take uh, queries and, and questions about the process. Next slide. So I'd like to hand uh, the presentation on to Adina Rosten, who is a current Dental Foundation trainee in, uh, in London, Kent, Surrey and Sussex, who is going to provide some advice to you all in terms of the application process. Adina. Good evening, everyone. Can I? Can you hear me? Lovely. Good evening. My name is Adina Austin, and I am coming to the end of my DFT year as part of the Northwest London DME. I've just been asked to speak to you for the next 10 minutes or so, just to give you some general hints and tips about the application process and some advice about ways of making potentially stressful process that much more straightforward. Next slide, please. So Peter has already spoken in depth about the application process, so I'm just going to briefly touch on this. My biggest piece of advice is to be organised. You don't need me to tell you fifth year and finals is stressful enough as it is. However, the key to minimising stress is to make sure that you stay on top of your deadlines and don't leave things until the last minute. The opening date for Oriel is during your summer holiday or right at the beginning of fifth year, so you should have plenty of time to sort this out before you start. Don't leave it until the deadline. You've just seen all the important dates on the slides. I highly recommend that you put these in your diary tonight and have multiple reminders in your phone for each deadline. There's always the odd student who misses one and there are no exceptions made, so don't be that student. The applicant guides can be quite long, but they do cover absolutely everything that you need to know and more. It's well worth investing half an hour in reading them to save you stress at a later date. They have been created solely for your benefit, so do familiarise yourself with them over the summer holiday. I know that myself and some of my colleagues did find Oriel slightly challenging to navigate initially, so do make sure that you read the help guide and allow yourself plenty of time to familiarise yourself with it. It is a two-stage process, as Peter already emphasised. First, you have to register on Oriel and then you apply for the actual post. Simply registering on Oriel does not mean you've applied for DFT, so do make sure that you have completed both stages. Next slide, please. So Peter's already mentioned that the SJT is going to make up 75% of your ranking, so it is important that you try and do as well as you can in this. For those of you who drive, the test centre shouldn't be daunting, as you would have sat your driving theory here. I have now sat three SJTs and I've always found them to be incredibly accommodating and helpful, so do not be nervous about the actual centres. Make sure that you do book a slot as soon as it opens to maximise your chance of getting something convenient. 
The good slots do get snapped up pretty quickly and you don't want to be trekking halfway across the country to complete it or doing it at a time that doesn't work for you. On the day itself, make sure that you allow plenty of time to get there. Sometimes you get there early, you'll actually be able to start early if you would like to, and at least then you won't be sitting the exam flustered. Whilst it is useful to spend some time preparing and familiarising yourself with the question types, ultimately the SJT is actually testing softer skills which you can't really prepare for. It's an assessment of non-academic and professional attributes such as empathy, compassion and team involvement, all things you're very good at having got to the stages in your career, so don't spend hours prepping. It won't gain you more marks and in fact I know that I found that I got progressively worse the more questions I did as I started to second guess myself. There are lots of courses out there who are very eager to take your money. I would say they can be great if you're someone who needs that push to kickstart your revision, but just remember that they are not HEE endorsed and the questions and answers that they give for the SJT may not match the panel of experts who have devised the final questions. So do take everything you hear with a pinch of salt and don't jump into handing out your money to the first person you hear from. In terms of your prep, I would say it's definitely worth completing the couple of uh, practice questions that have been officially published by HEE. These are the only official ones, so do look at these. There are lots of textbooks available with practice questions, some of which I have included at the end of this PowerPoint, but do use them with caution because again, the answer process may not be so rigorous. Also be aware that a lot of them are created by medics for medics, and they do require some basic medical knowledge, which you may not have. This obviously won't happen in your exam, so don't get too concerned if you come across this. Next slide, please. So a few tips for the answering the SJT questions themselves. First of all, I usually find with SJT, your gut instinct is usually correct, as long as you have read and understood the question properly. So you are best off going with your first answer. Make sure you do look at all of the options before making decisions. You do have approximately two minutes per question, which is plenty of time to do this. Try and theme the question and highlight keywords. They'll tend to be a focus in terms of who is actually involved and who the priority is. If a patient is involved, anything that prioritises them is likely to be ranked highly. If a colleague is involved, you should always be aiming to protect them, but equally if they are doing something wrong, which might be jeopardising patient safety, then remember that patients always come first. I would advise having a basic understanding of the hierarchy in DFT, knowing who to escalate, what to, and what your educational supervisor is there for, versus your training programme director, as well as when you'd be considering calling your indemnity and GDC. You always want to try and keep things local where possible. It can be very tempting to assume information that hasn't been provided in the question. Don't do this. Just take everything at face value. The questions have been worded like this for a reason. With the ranking questions, you'll usually find you can select the first and last option straight away, which will automatically guarantee you 16 out of 20. It is worth looking into how the marking scheme works to understand this because it can be a little bit tricky to get your head around initially. You cannot get zero if you answer every question and there is no negative marking. With the best of three questions, you are aiming to decide which three work best collectively together. It is usually possible to eliminate obviously bad ones from the outset and as there are eight, you usually manage to get down to about five that you'll decide in between. Ultimately, remembering that when you are answering the SJTs, you are answering as a foundation dentist. So don't try and be a superhero and always think about patient safety. Next slide, please. OK, so tackling the interview, as Peter said, this is going to be 25 percent of your score. As before, I cannot stress enough the importance of accepting the invitation quickly. Do make sure you're regularly checking your oral and your emails as well as your junk to ensure you do not miss the invitation. Practice, practice, practice. Practicing with dental colleagues as well as with friends and family is key. I'd even suggest practicing via Zoom or Teams because this is ultimately how you will be doing it on the day. Non-dental colleagues can often give a different useful perspective which dental colleagues might not be able to highlight. So recruit your friends, your husbands, your kids, your wives, whatever it is, whoever's available, just practice on anybody who's willing to listen to you. I would advise recording yourselves. It can be awkward watching it back, but it is invaluable. I learned so much about things that I never knew that I was doing, such as speaking too fast, which perhaps I'm doing today. It can also highlight if you're awkwardly moving your hands or saying things like um too much. Although the interview is virtual, you still want to dress to impress. So make sure you, you do dress as you would in person. This is a communication station and it can be more challenging to engage the assessor virtually. Remember that to actually have eye contact, you need to be looking at the camera and not at the screen. 
although no one is marking you on your room, a messy room will not give a good impression. So make sure that your, your bed is clean behind you if you're doing it in your bedroom. Also make sure that you have excellent Wi-Fi and that if this is shared with anyone at home, you tell them all to try and limit uses during your interview. Now is not the time to start binge watching Netflix. You don't want to be cut out halfway through. Ultimately, this is a job interview and the assessors are acting on behalf of future employers who want to know how well you will meet the job specifications. It is a competitive scheme and you are competing with your peers, so be prepared, make sure to bring your A-game with you. This is not simply an undergraduate test, it is big world stuff. Next slide, please. So just a few tips for the comm scenarios. They will be released in advance, so you will have time to practice these beforehand and try and anticipate possible questions. This is both a good thing and a bad thing, as you will hopefully be able to prepare lots of the questions, but equally on the day you may well end up finding you answer a question you've prepared, but not actually the one that's been asked. So make sure that you do listen to the question, digest it, and only when you're sure you know what they've asked, then start answering. If you're not sure what the question that was, or nerves got the better of you and you just didn't hear, don't be afraid to ask for it to be repeated. It's far better that you do that than go off on a tangent. Remember that this is largely a test of communication and there won't be any clinical knowledge that's asked that you won't know. But I would advise making sure that you are familiar with treatment protocols and that you talk these through and communicate them properly. The scenarios are not designed to catch you out. They just want to see how well you can communicate and whether you will be making a good employee. Remember, as with everything, patience at the heart of everything we do and this should be reflected in your answers. This is a communication, so soft skills are key. Show compassion, empathy, all of the things that I know you've been doing for the last four years and you'll be amazing. Finally, all that everybody wants to see is that you are a safe beginner. Don't try and show off, it won't win you any marks. Just do what you do on a daily basis and you'll be absolutely fine. Next slide, please. So just a quick note on preferencing. I know this feels like a while off, but the year will fly by and it will creep up on you before you know it. Ranking does take a long time. There are a lot of factors to consider aside from location and you don't want to be rushed into making this decision. So don't leave it until the last minute. Try and rank all schemes or all practices if this is how it ends up working your year. If you don't, you do risk not getting a job. So try and preference as widely as possible. Remember that the big cities such as London, Manchester and Birmingham are always going to be the most competitive. That's not to say you shouldn't apply to them, but just be prepared that lots of other people will want them too. DFT is about more than just staying where you've lived your whole life and starting a job. It's an opportunity to manage different people from different backgrounds, make new friends, have an adventure. Some of the schemes get to go on trips. Obviously, in our year, these were unfortunately cancelled, but it's definitely worth looking into these. Lots of my friends ended up having to move out initially, and they were quite upset by this to begin with but all of them have loved their year and some have now even accepted DCT posts in their new region as they've enjoyed it so much. So don't be disheartened if you don't originally get what you want. Upgrades are relatively uncommon with DFT, but they do happen. So you lose nothing by opting into them as a more desirable scheme may become available. Do bear in mind that if you are upgraded, you will likely then be the bottom of the scheme you've been upgraded to. So it will be less likely to get your desired practice, whereas if you stay in your original scheme, you will likely have a better chance. So do factor this into your decision making. Remember, this might be slightly different in your year because I know this year they've done ranking to practices, but if you do end up ranking practice directly, just do bear all of these factors in mind. Once you have been assigned your job, I would advise speaking to the current foundation dentist. They can provide you with lots of useful information and it can be great to start the job with a little bit of inside knowledge. Next slide, please. So getting ready for your new job. Don't forget that all of this is irrelevant if you don't pass finals. So don't lose sight of the end goal and don't take your foot off the pedals. The end is nearly in sight. I know that your year has been particularly badly affected by the pandemic and there's still a lot of uncertainty surrounding graduation and finals. I want to reassure you that your universities and HEE want all of you to get jobs just as much as you want to get them. You won't simply be left to your own devices, so don't panic if things don't go to plan. Even if you end up having to repeat a year or start DFT a little later than usual, Whilst it may seem like a big deal now, in the grand scheme of hopefully a 50 to 60 year career, it will pale into insignificance. You've all done incredibly well to continue studying over the past year and a half in whatever format that may be. And I can assure you that if you can handle this pandemic, you can handle anything that DFT might throw at you. Once you have graduated, just bear in mind that the GDC process, as well as the NHS performer applications, can take a little bit of a while to start. So do try and get these started as soon as possible after you've received confirmation of graduation. 
most importantly, and I can't stress this enough, relax, recharge, recuperate. DFT is a fun but stressful year and you want to make sure you start in the right mindset, feeling energised and ready to tackle whatever comes your way. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, these are just a few resources that I personally found quite helpful. They are not endorsed by HE in any way, and there are plenty of others out there, but these I found were a good kickstart to my revision. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that this whistle stop tour has been helpful. I will be here to answer questions with Peter over the next 20 minutes or so. But if you do have any other further questions, there'll be plenty of foundation dentists who will be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adina. Very, very, uh, very good presentation. And I, I know it'll be very relevant to the uh, uh, delegates and audience this evening. We've got lots of questions, uh, some of which are, are, are answerable probably best by me, some by Miles, and as Adina says, so, so I'm going to start with the, uh, the first question, which um, I know Miles has had a look at. Uh, what makes someone appointable and non-appointable um, in terms of appointability rather than preferencing ranking? I think that's what you're talking about. Somebody being not appoint appointable and being informed they're not appointable to even the preferencing process. Uh, that happens very rarely. Uh, indeed, uh, and 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 happens in in, except, in in the presence of exceptional low SJT scores, uh, and a a concern uh, classically from panels that assess people in interviews. So there would be uh, the, the 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 components that would make up an issue like that would be a a, 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 a very poor SJT T performance. Now I'm, I don't want to get into deep statistics, but I think it is around three point five. Uh, deviations, standard deviations from 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 the mean performance, uh, and uh, the other issue would clearly be around the, um, uh, the 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 performance in the virtual interview station, where where the people observing the candidates may have a concern about an individual, and of course any of those concerns would be looked at by a national QA group, uh, and the, and and the numbers within a recruitment such as this are very very small. Uh, Miles, would you like to make comment on that? Uh, no, I think you covered it there. Uh, I've got the another question, Miles. I think uh, will people for you will receive extra time in uni exams, but were assessed via the evaluation of needs due to COVID, will they receive additional time? So the guidance states that people, um, sorry, applicants need uh, to provide evidence, so like some sort of report or a letter from a recognised authority. So that's quite vague in that, I guess, if the assessment has been done by their university um, and they've got some sort of report, we might be able to accept that, but I'd need to double check with the MDRS and maybe we can get, uh, communicate with applicants just to clarify. Fine, excellent. Uh, the, we've got a question about using emails, um, uh, uh, Miles, about using university emails. Do we have advice on that? Yes, uh, please do not use university emails. Um, they often, people often lose access to them or something. Please use personal emails that you have access to all the time that you're regularly checking junk mail, junk mail folders of. So I've got a question here around uh, which I'll take around the uh, students applying for the 2021 start uh, who uh, don't graduate in time due to their course being extended and don't get a spot in early 22. Can they uh, do another application for the uh, 2022 start? The answer is yes. Uh, because the, it, it will be a new application for you. Uh, uh, so that if you are, uh, if, if your graduation doesn't allow you to start in potentially March 22, which is when the delayed uh, recruitment round would be in the 21 programme. I know all these 21s and 22s are getting complicated, particularly with a delayed scheme potentially in, in March 22. You would effectively be out of the process if you weren't, uh, of that process if you were not allowed, uh, able to start in March March 22, and you would need to apply for this process to secure a, a September start in in 2022. Would, would you agree with that, uh, Mars? Yes.
uh, I've got, I'm just looking for some other questions here that are, uh, is the SJT completed uh, on a computer? Uh, yes. Does the recruitment process include the academic dental foundation uh, training posts? Uh, all, all applicants will go through the NRO process and the uh, applicants for the academic dental foundation uh, post will have a separate uh, interview process for uh, the academic domains. So the answer is yes. Uh, how soon in advance will a scenario be released for the for the comm station? Uh, I, th I I can't give you any guarantees of dates, but I think there'll be a good there'll be a good few weeks before the uh, the, the, the it virtual interview. So there will be good warning in terms of what the scenarios are, and the scenario will be posted on the Oriel website. So you will have good warning before the um, uh, interviews of exactly what it is uh, that the subject scenarios will be of the communications. Clearly not the individual questions, but the scenarios in which will be discussed and with the focus being on communication it's not going to be on skills and knowledge um, Scottish candidates. is there anything else uh, miles that you thought would be um so i'm not sure of this one but this is a, an interesting one would scottish candidates need to retake the sjt exam if they're applying in scotland i guess it's a separate recruitment process <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, we cannot speak for Scotland here this evening. This is a this is a Wales, Northern Ireland, and and and, and HE H, H, England. Uh, we we can really provide you with no no, no information on in terms of the Scottish recruitment process. Um, so the answer is uh, it's best for us not to 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 come to to to, to answer that question because I don't know. Uh, there's also one about. Um... What would you recommend as to how would you sort out accommodation as the office will be in June? Maybe Adina might have some advice. Adina, have you got some suggestions and advice on that to your colleagues? So I don't have personal suggestions because I actually stayed in London in spite of everything I said. Um, <laughs> but I know that everyone, even though it seems like quite a short window, all of my friends who moved out somehow managed to find places. I know from just moving out in general, even in London, most places actually when you're looking they're available within the next month or now so don't panic if you only find out a month before because most places for rent actually don't want you any more before that um but again i would recommend trying to find people on your scheme as well whatsapp groups usually get set up and that might be a good way to find out if there's anybody that you could potentially flat share with as well Thank you very much for that. Uh, some questions now about um, is a sample SJT available to practice? There will be sample SJT questions as mentioned on the uh, Copden website. Um, will people who receive extra time in uni exams but recess for the evaluation of needs uh, receive? I think we've answered that and the answer is yes. Um, does SJT booking open at the same time as application on the 12th of August, Miles, or is there a di different key date for that? So that will be a separate um, invite to self booking that people will receive after the application window is closed. The date is TBC right now, um, but it'll be a separate communication. Thank you. Uh, a question, will you find out your ranking prior to the preferencing? Now, all of you will know that normally that doesn't happen. It's happened this year and it happened this year as a COVID um, uh, uh, support uh, to help people with the sub preferencing because this this year's recruitment at the very end of the uh, recruitment, the preference is to, is to individual practice level. And it was thought that the ranking, uh, that people knowing their ranking would support and help people with that process. But the usual process is not to do so. And at this time point, I think our message would be that that's not normally what we would do. And this year we've done it as a COVID uh, mitigation. Uh, someone's asked how, uh, how much time in advance will they receive the comm scenario? Yeah, I've, I've tried to answer that probably very badly, Miles. Uh, okay. um, uh, I, I, I would like to think it will be uh, available for at least a week before the uh, a, a assessment process. Uh, I can't give an absolute time, uh, but uh, the, the, the plan will be it will be made available in good time for people prior to the, uh, uh, the, the, the interview, the, the comms virtual interview, uh, and uh, it will be known by them prior to the ass assessment. 
Um, there's a question here that I don't fully understand. Um, I'm going to read it. It says, I'm just hoping for some clarity for current fifth year dental students in Scotland, as we have not received any guidance on our current application. For those of us who have applied for 2021-22 DFT, do we withdraw our current application as we have still received our rankings today? We will also have to apply for 2022. Will we also have to apply for 2022-23 as normal? Um, again, it's very difficult for me to, 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 to comment uh, being a postgraduate dean in, in England and the, on the Scottish situation. Um, clearly, to be uh, eligible for appointment at these posts, you would need to be eligible to be appointed. So you would need a BDS degree uh, and, and, and eligible for uh, full registration with the uh, GDC and for a performance list uh, a, a number at the time of appointment, which would be um, a, a, on, on the uh, September 2000, beginning of September 2022. So uh, if for any applicants that are eligible and have those eligibilities uh, as UK graduates, uh, my understanding is that they would be uh, eligible for appointment for September 2022. If that answers the question or does it sound as though they're in the current, does it sound as though in the current process? Sounds like they're in the current process to me. So if they're in the current process, I would use the same analogy. Uh, you you will have to be eligible to take up a dental foundation training progress on, on the 1st of September 2022 or potentially delayed to uh, March, 2000, sorry, September 21 or potentially delayed until March 2022. You will need a BDS degree or equivalence. You will need to be eligible for GDC full registration and eligible for a NHS performer number uh, by the start of commencement of training. And if if they are not eligible for that, then they will not be able to take up the post. So there's uh, the question about a visa. Will I have to also apply for a tier two visa? Um, but that's pretty down to the individual's circumstance isn't it um yeah i i we're, we're not experts on 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 tier two visas but uh, clearly it will be down to uh, individual needs and cir circumstances uh, what i will say is we do have a, a team an overseas sponsorship team who are experts and have all the advice you need um and you can get that uh, contact information from the applicant guidance or from the recruitment team we can provide it to you um there's one about um do we rank deaneries or schemes initially? And this year it's it's schemes. Um, so next year it's going to be schemes as well, isn't it? Yeah, this at this time point we are we, we are doing hopefully what we normally do, which will be that people will be preferencing uh, to schemes. And a scheme is a basically is a geographical area of which is a group of practices that will make up a dental foundation training scheme. So yes, we are we are preferencing at this time point to schemes. Uh, there's a one of our um, if they have technical issues in interview during an interview will they really will they result will that result in a zero mark um, and no usually we pause time we try to work out any technical issues and then restart the clock where we stopped or we try to reschedule your interview for contingency slots that we might have later on in the day if it's a longer problem yeah, there's been a lot of work done on that, Miles, hasn't there, in terms of virtual interviewing, etc. So uh, yeah. rest assured, there's been a lot of work done around what happens when there is ITT glitches, and we all know they can happen. Uh, they're rare, but they can happen. So please be reassured that that does not mean it's zero mark and etc. There will be contingencies and mitigation options and plans available. Um. Will we be contacted via Oriel when the window for booking for the SJT exam slots is open? Yeah, so that will be a separate communication after the application closes. Um, the date is to be confirmed, but you'll be notified by the team via Oriel and you can self book onto your SJT slot. Um, if you are a carer or a parent or of a child under 18, you can be considered. Can you? You can be considered with preference for a particular region, what about those who are married with a recent home purchase and your husband or wife is unable to move? So that's the category, isn't it? Uh, 
Uh, I don't think it is actually. Uh, uh, there's three categories uh, and the uh, parental category was the most recent uh, introduced. So uh, yes, I, I understand. I think we all understand what you're saying, but uh, at present that will not qualify as a special circumstance. Uh, will there be a March 2023 start date? Also, uh, I think we are if we start if we start thinking about delayed schemes for there to be a March 2023 start date when the hopeful start date would be September 22. Uh, it would mean that year four training and graduation had been significantly delayed. Uh, I think all of our hope is that will not be the case. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, as we have done this year's, uh, we, we, we keep an open and flexible option because we want to support UK graduates into dental foundation training. We also want to support the dental schools and the dental school council. So at the moment, the plan is for September 2022. Uh, start for this recruitment process, but clearly we'll be uh, working very closely with the dental schools, councils and other agencies in terms of uh, 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 sort of finding out and, and, and being on top of uh, the, the pressures currently uh, and future pressures of the final year dental students. My hope is that we will be able to keep to the timeline start of September 2022, but you need to be reassured if there are problems, we will be doing our best and be flexible to support all sides to get people in and progress into dental foundation training. I think there's two more. Um, so is there any cost that we pay during the whole application process? And if so, how much? I'm not aware of any. I think the answer is none. Yep. And then uh, should applicants should applicants for this year's DFT who will not graduate for March 22 withdraw their applications then? Uh, let's just see what that question is. is. Should applicants for this year's DFT who do not graduate for March 22 withdraw their applications then? Um, yes, I think if 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 there are, if you know without uh, basically the dental schools council and the dental schools will inform the national recruitment office of the names of the students that are eligible for cohort A of 2020. Uh, to 2021 and March 2022 and clearly if you are not eligible in those groups uh, you will be removed from the recruitment process or, or you can choose to withdraw. Is it possible to withdraw uh, any stage Miles? Yes you can yeah. withdraw your application. So yeah. the answer is yes you can withdraw your application. Um, and then uh, overseas international students for non-EU graduates from the UK dental schools uh, will they be considered equally as UK nationals applying to DFT? Uh, for overseas international students. Uh, the, 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 the Dental Foundation tr tr training uh, uh, recruitment, uh, uh, it, there are two lists of, of, of applicants. Because the UK dental students can only join the uh, NHS performer number via Dental Foundation training, uh, uh, a priority is given to list a applicants, which are those dental students qualifying in England. For any job that is uh, a vacant following uh, final offers, uh, uh, those jobs will be available for uh, list B, which is uh, the rest of the world and overseas and EEA, EEA dentists. Uh, and the reason for 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 the for the uh, priority of the UK graduates is around the route and gateway to which they can achieve and obtain an NHS performer list number. Um, Adina had. Uh, she mentioned there are some costs that might be worth mentioning. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Adina, what are they? There's absolutely no cost to apply for DFT, but I do think it's worth just being aware when I mentioned about the GDC application and the NHS performer list. The GDC, obviously, you do need to pay your uh, registration and you will be paying for about half the year initially. That I think that came to about £300 maybe, and then you're paying again in the December at the end of that year. So just do factor that into your financial calculations. And when you're doing the NHS performer, you also have to pay for a DBS check, which can come up to about 60 pounds. So the actual DFT application is completely yeah, free, yeah. but those are important to be able to actually start DFT. So factor those in. And then so the you've got a question about the actors. Uh, yeah. uh, and we've got a question about um, 
right, let's just see what the question actually is. Uh, uh, what's the question about the actors? Hold on, let me just quickly find it. I think it was about the 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 act the fact we're not using actors and 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 the reasons we're not using actors around uh, uh, mitigation of the digital interview process to, to reduce the numbers of people so there isn't the risk to reduce the risk of uh, clicks uh, and IT uh, failures. Uh, what's happening with the uh, station is that uh, the uh, the the Dental Foundation uh, recruitment subgroup are working very closely uh, with 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 education and uh, I, I can reassure all that the, uh, the, the clinicians being used to do the assessment of communication will be calibrated and, and trained as appropriate to make that uh, to make that assessment. Uh, but the, and the reason that actors are not being used this year is because it was felt by 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 the NRO and others that to have a, a, a lot of people involved in, in in what is a very you know it, 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 we, we don't want any significant we want to reduce the risk of significant IT problems when people are having virtual interviews so that's why that's why uh, clinicians are being used but yes they are being calibrated and trained in, in relationship to communication assessment which is the goal of that station uh, there was another um, There's a, there's a question, Miles, on additional time. Yep. Um, so um, the report. So whatever the evidence is, if it's a report, it must uh, make a clear recommendation for um, whatever the reasonable adjustment is. So, for example, 25 percent extra time for any instances of reading and writing. Um, so if they if the applicant was applying for a reasonable adjustment, there needs to be a clear stipulation in, in whatever report yeah. they're providing. Um, but if they were applying for maybe just a guarantee to interview scheme because they have a protected characteristic, then that report, if it falls within the, the time constraints, may suffice. So uh, I think we, Miles, thank you very much. I think a, a couple more and then I think we probably need to look to finish. We've had a clarification from the Scottish inquiry. Sorry, I meant Scottish final year students who are extended by year but have completed their SJT. Would they need to retake the SJT? Yes, if they have to apply again, they will have to re retake the SJT. Sorry about the communication. You weren't talking about uh, recruitment in, in, in Scotland. You're talking about in England. Yes, you, in, in NRO, you would have to redo the SJT to, to, to apply for, for Dental Foundation training in 2020. Um, there was another question there I saw just a second. Um, uh, can, can, can we take this to mean that there will be and uh, not be the usual unseen case presentation during the virtual interview and it is only the communication section? The answer to that question is yes, you are correct. There will be no unseen uh, presentation and, and, and the virtual interview will be a communication assessment just involving communication. Uh, question is an OPML station. Yes, there is no uh, professional management and leadership station. There is only one communication station, uh, a, a, a communication virtual interview that will last 10 minutes with the, scenar with the scenarios available on the, uh, uh, the oral prior to the uh, uh, your assessment. Um, Peter, are all of the posts at general dental practices or are there any at hospitals? Uh, the vast, vast majority of, of posts are in dental practices. There's some in uh, uh, C, uh, uh, sort of PDS services. And as I've mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, there are some uh, schemes that are joint longitudinal training schemes that work in within uh, general practice and also community services and secondary care. Uh, the longitudinal training programs that do that are in the North East. Uh, and uh, in Yorks and Humber. So the answer is there is a small number of posts that uh, work regularly in secondary care, but it's a very, very small number of posts. Um, there's a question about if you receive a, a scheme that you don't prefer, can you decline? Uh, you can decline, but you will then be withdrawn from the process um, if you decline your offer. Yes, I think within reason you need preferences to schemes that you'll be prepared to work. Uh, and every year uh, mm -hmm. there are some UK graduates who do not get a post 
because they preference themselves out of the recruitment. So for me, uh, I think the suggestion I think would be sensible that you'd want to preference m more more schemes rather than less to avoid that risk. Um, someone's asked if they need a national insurance number to apply. You don't necessarily need it, I guess, at the time of application for our application process, but you may need it at the time of um, employment checks and <clears throat> to be paid and stuff. Absolutely. Uh, I've got this one for you, Adina, really. How, 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 what's your advice on selecting your practice and what key things do you look for when selecting it? Um, so there's a number of things. Obviously, number one is always geography, but then um, different practices are part of different schemes which have study days on different days. So if you potentially have a preference for what day your study day would be, most are on a Friday, but there are some that have on a Wednesday or Tuesday. Within the practice itself, depending on how much detail you get about it, you can look up to see if there are any um, people who have specialists or special interests. If you're maybe be considering specialising in the future, you might be interested in um, look into a practice which maybe has an orthodontist on site and then within the schemes itself as I mentioned you know some of them have uh, trips that shouldn't be the, the reason you choose something because your entire year is not result revolved around trip but that can also be a nice thing to consider as well when you're when you're choosing your schemes. Uh, a question around are the are the combined dental foundation DCT they're called joint uh, dental foundation core training programs are they uh, included in the available posts the answer is yes they are should we wait and we've got a question here uh, Kyle I think we should be thinking to finish off soon we've got a question should we sign up for Oriel now or wait until August the 12th uh, you can sign up now that's fine you don't have to wait Uh, the question is uh, the number shown in, in the graph earlier showed that about 300 uh, didn't get a post. Does this mean they were applying for 200, 2022 dental foundation training? Clearly, there are the, the that was all applicants to the pros. That was not just the UK a, a applicants to the pros. Uh, and I can confirm that the vast majority of UK graduates were 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 were, uh, uh, were offered a dental foundation training post in 2021. So with that, um, I would like to thank people that's made this evening possible. I'd like to thank Claire Hubby in the background, who's been excellent in, in operating things and putting up with <laughs> with, with our, our email communication, etc. And I thank you very much, uh, Claire, for your help. I'd like to thank Her Helen Barrett as well, who who who, put, who who facilitated this. That we can only describe short notice to the point where she was concerned it was too short. So I thank you very much, uh, Helen, for sitting with me. And I'd also like to thank uh, Adina for presenting to such a large group this evening. I thank you. Very much and also Miles from joining us and being so valuable particularly in, in, in the Q&A section in terms of uh, being able to ask quite specific and granular uh, questions that were that came to the audience. So as I've said earlier uh, you will all uh, be uh, get the opportunity to uh, be exposed to a local postgraduate dean presentation on, on, on 2022 dental foundation recruitment. Uh, if there's any questions we haven't been able to ask this evening because of time please Please, please remember them and ask the team on the evening and I'd like to thank you all of you for joining us this evening and hope you enjoyed the webinar and remember there will be a, a YouTube YouTube link uh, created for this webinar. Thank you very much for all of you for attending this evening. Cheerio, bye bye.